So I've been in the studio for a little while, so I haven't been able to do one of these videos for a little bit, but I'm back today and I want to show you a plugin that I always use on my master channel. It's one of those things I don't think I've actually gone into on any of my videos before, even though I've kind of shown you how I put together my tracks. I haven't actually shown you this amazing plugin that I always use for metering. It's called Levels by Master in the Mix. And it's one of those plugins that you just drop on the master channel and it really does tell you so much more information about how loud your track is. And if you're mastering yourself or just want to get your track ready for the club, it's essential. So let's jump into Ableton and I'll show you exactly how this plugin works. Now we're back in Ableton and we're looking at a brand new track of mine called All I Want. It's out on track source now if you want to help support. Links in the description below if you want to download a copy. But this has already been mastered, so I actually sent this off to my mastering engineer to get professionally mastered before it was released. But what I want to show you is how I kind of set it up before it was professionally mastered. So I'd want to play this in my set, so I had to kind of master it myself first. I don't want to keep sending it to an engineer every time I make a tweak and then want to play it out again. So I would master it myself and then I would then be able to play out that weekend, for example. If you want to check out, I did a quick video on quick and dirty mastering. My kind of method of mastering. I'll put a link up there so you can have a look at that video. But basically I went into how I use uh, ozone, isotope ozone to be able to master my tracks kind of in a quick and dirty way ready for my sets. And that's kind of how it's set up at the moment. The only kind of difference on here is I actually have my analog heat which is the saturation unit that I always use. That's actually disabled at the moment, just for this screencast, just for recording this video. Normally I'd have that turned on, but at the moment it's just turned off. Now I've also got ozone on here, and this is doing a few things master-wise. We've got an EQ in there, boosting a bit at the bottom end there. I've got an imager there, just making it a little bit wider. Bit of dynamic EQ, which has actually come from the maximizer. So I've actually put this through the master assistant on the ozone to kind of just maximize it a little bit and kind of just bring up that volume. Now, one of the things I want to do is obviously I let ozone do its thing. I let it go through its mastering assistant to be able to kind of get a decent master. But I want to be able to know what that sounds like, how loud that actually is and whether it compares to other tracks and how it will kind of sound in the club. And that's where this levels plugin comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this onto my master channel. I actually took it off just for the purposes of this demo so you can kind of see how I use it. So I'm just going to drop it on my master channel here and as it just sets up. There's very little kind of setup for this plugin. There are some settings within here, which I'll show you in a second, but that's about it. There's nothing really kind of to do with this plugin. You literally just drop it on your master channel and it will start giving you information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play this back now and I'm going to show you some of these sections and how this plugin works. So let's play back the master mix. I just love the interface of this plugin. It looks so nice. It's so fresh and clean and so easy to use. And that's really important in a plugin. So let's have a look through it. And the first thing you'll notice in the middle is this kind of EQ, kind of a generic EQ kind of readout, which shows kind of all the different uh, areas of the EQ. And around it, you have all these different sections. So you've got headroom, stereo field, dynamic range, and bass space. And let's go into each one of those in a second. But one of the most important things in here is a little mono switch. So you can go between the stereo output and then you can convert it into mono to see how that sounds as well. And that's really important, especially if you're gonna play your, your track out in a club. Some club sound systems aren't stereo, they're in mono. So it's a good idea to kind of have that mono switch on there and just kind of preview it, see how it sounds because you might lose certain elements in the mix if they are if they are panned too far to the left and too far to the, far to the right it might not quite sound that great so that mono switch is really handy so you can easily just turn that on and off to be able to kind of put it into mono if you need to so the first section and probably the most important section the one that pretty much everybody focuses on because this is the main feature of levels is the headroom so this kind of shows you how loud your mix is. Now the headroom section has two different ways it shows you how loud your mix is. And the first way is the normal kind of decibel meter. This is in true peak mode, so it really kind of gives you a good indication of just how loud that mix is.
And then the second mode is luffs mode. Now this, you might have heard this term banded around. And actually, to be honest, I didn't actually know what it meant. And I'm not a mastering engineer, so I wouldn't necessarily know what it means anyway. So let's have a look. This is what the definition is. So we can see here that luffs is a term for loudness unit full scale. Now LUFS kind of came out of uh, the loudness war and trying to regulate that for different platforms. So you need a certain level for streaming platforms and a certain level for radio and a certain level for playing in the clubs. They're all kind of different levels and that's what this kind of LUFS metering is all about. At least that's kind of what I get from it. I'm sure a mastering engineer will give you a whole different definition or a whole different idea. But in other, in other words, LUFS is just a way of kind of seeing that loudness over time. Now what I can do is I can put this levels into LUFS mode and it kind of gives me uh, a short term and a long term readout here. So we've got the short term on the left and the long term on the right hand. So the short term shows you how loud it actually is at that point in time and then the one on the right shows you it over like an average of what the LUFS are. So if I play this back you'll kind of see how this works. So you can see there it's averaging about minus 7.3 LUFS, which at the moment it's set up so it's actually uh, working quite nicely. That's not too loud in the mix, it's not peaking, that's just working quite nicely. Now if I go into the settings I'll show you how this is all set up. So we have different presets here for different LUF levels. So at the moment I've got mine set to club and it actually shows here that kind of the threshold for LUFs on the club is minus six. So if, if my kind of the LUF reading goes over minus six then it will start warning me that it's just too loud. And the same thing goes if you're if you're then mastering for SoundCloud or streaming platforms it actually adjusts here as well. So for example for streaming the actual threshold should be minus 11 LUFs. So as you can see there, there is a big difference between the club and streaming presets there. There's a whole big difference between the loudness that your track needs to be. Now, say for example, you mastered your track to club levels, then when it comes to uploading it to streaming platforms, sure, that will still work, but they're gonna really kind of squash your track down. They wanna kind of bring it down in volume and it's just not gonna sound as good. But if you prepare your mix ready for streaming platforms then they haven't got to do any of that kind of compression or limiting or anything else like that to kind of really affect the sound of your track so if you're kind of mastering it for streaming platforms it will sound better so when it, if you're kind of mastering yourself then you'll probably want to do a version for streaming and a version for the club because it will just make your track sound a whole lot better so yeah it, these settings are really great and I've got it on club most of the time because when it comes to mastering myself I'm always mastering for the club. When it comes to sending my track off to labels, then I'll get it professionally mastered and they'll handle all that for me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna push it and see how much we can push this levels before it starts telling us that our mix is too loud. Now I'm gonna use the maximizing ozone and I'm gonna just squash the crap out of this and see how this levels reacts. <laughs> So that sounds like absolute crap, but I kind of wanted to show you just how Levels reacts when you start throwing like massive volumes at it and how it kind of shows you what those issues are. So we can see here that Headroom and Dynamic Range are both lit up red here. So it's all kind of gone into the red. You know, you need to kind of back off the Headroom and the Dynamic Range is obviously being affected as well because it's so, so squashed. So yeah, it's not, it's not too good that. So there you go, you can kind of see how useful that Headroom section is, it gives you a really indication of just how loud your track is and what you can do is you can kind of push certain elements if you want to make your track louder you can start pushing different elements and seeing what perceived loudness you can get out of your track without you know kind of going over the top so it's a really good kind of metering software to have. Now one of the other features I really love about this plugin is the stereo field function and this allows you to kind of see just how wide your mix is.
the, one of the most important features of this stereo field is the low pass button. So this will show you just the low frequencies and how wide they are. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, I always say about my mixes, I always kind of like to get them so that the low frequencies, the bass, the kick, are all in mono because that bass frequencies, the bass frequencies can really kind of start to muddy up your mix if you're getting a lot of stereo information in there. So I tend to kind of mono those or at least kind of narrow them down so they're not taking up so much room in stereo wise and this kind of plugin really kind of shows you what's going on down in that low range so yeah you put that low pass filter on the on the levels and you can kind of see in that stereo field feature just how wide your low end is so that's a really useful feature another great feature of levels is a dynamic range and that kind of shows you just how much dynamics you have within your mix so if your mix is really really squashed and everything's kind of maximum volume and it's just sounding just compressed as hell then that dynamic range will probably light up red and tell you that because there's not much dynamic range happening within there so yeah it's a really kind of cool thing to have in there and yes as i say if it kind of lights up then i know there's something instantly wrong with my mix and i will kind of adjust things so so everything's not quite as compressed. Now, another feature that I absolutely love about this is called bass space. Now this kind of shows just how much bass is in the other instruments within your, within your mix. So for example, you've got your kick in there, you've got your bass in there. You probably think that's where most of the bass sounds are coming from within your track. But if you muted them, you might find that some of your other elements within your mix actually have quite a bit of bass going on within them. And that's what this section is all about. So what you do is you mute your kick and you mute your bass, and then it will tell you just how much bass action is going on in the rest of the track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this back and I'm gonna mute both the bass and the kick on here. Okay, so this is working quite nicely. As I say, I've kind of gone through and I've tweaked all this anyway. So this is kind of showing me kind of good results, but it kind of shows you here different frequencies within the bass spectrum. So your 40 Hertz, 80 Hertz, 120 and 160. So you might find that some of your percussion, for example, might have some low end in there that you don't want, or maybe that piano has a low key within there that's causing a bit of bass frequency. And I say that's gonna kind of cause some issues within your mix. So this kind of section allows you to kind of really kind of see that very, very quickly. So it's one of those kind of quick checks to kind of see, you know, where the problems might be happening in your mix. If you've got a kind of a very muddy mix and you know you fix the kick and you know you fix the bass, but you're not quite sure where it's coming from, this might be able to fix that for you, or at least show you where that kind of issue is happening. <laughs> So it's a super, super simple plugin, dead easy to use. You just put it on that mastering channel and it gives you so much information. I use it all the time. I always put it on my master channel to check out the headroom, any issues with my stereo field, whether there's any bass frequencies there that I didn't notice were there. And it's just a second pair of ears and that's the most important thing. And as I say, the interface is so nice and easy to use. That's one of my favorite things about it. The fact that you can just see what's going on. It's like a visual representation of any kind of errors that might be happening. So yeah, I really love it for that reason. So if you wanna get a hold of it, link is in the description below. As I say, Plugin Boutique is one of the best places to get it. Usually is on discount or you can get discounts there anyway. Some of their bundles and stuff there are brilliant anyway. So definitely check out Plugin Boutique anyway. As I say, link is in the description if you wanna check them out. 
So hopefully this has been useful. Hopefully, you know, uh, you'll be able to use this plugin, you like it. Definitely comment below. Let me know if you have used it, if you've installed it, if you find it handy. Yeah, definitely want to hear what you think. So yeah, if this has been useful, definitely give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And also click that notification icon so you're notified whenever I upload a brand new video. I've got a load more videos like this on my channel, some more tools of the trade, plugins that I use all the time, and I show you exactly how I use them. So definitely check them out on my channel and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.